On today's episode, I'm going to walk you through my absolute favorite Robert Keeley pedals. They're really good. Don't want to miss it. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave. Here we go. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> Robert Keeley needs no introduction when it comes to the world of guitar pedals. He is a huge inspiration to the industry, and I like to call him one of the pedal fathers of the boutique movement. I've been fortunate to become friends with Robert and learn a lot from him, and this is his 20th anniversary. So in honor of that this year, I'm gonna show you my favorite Robert Keeley pedals, why I love them, why they sound so good, and tell you little bits of info that I've learned from him. First up, I'm going to play the Super Fat Mod. Now, why is this called Super Fat Mod? Well, it's actually a blues driver with his modifications to it. You see, he modded blues drivers back in the day. I mentioned it earlier, how it got me into pedals. And this is his fully modified version, and it is really, really nice. If you like low, medium gain, I think it's one of the best overdrives out there for a amp like tone it responds really well to your guitar's volume knob as well i think he mastered that sound in a box and he found a really really cool fet transistor that is very consistent and it makes this operate consistently across big production runs and i'm going to throw in the caverns so the caverns is probably one of the jhs show's favorite pedals right nick Absolutely. I use it all the time. Nick uses it on crap it shouldn't even go on. It's just like, it's becoming a staple. And uh, it's a two in one. And basically the reverb is a really nice spin FV1 algorithm that Robert is a master at and his team. You've heard the spring sound in products like the Milkman amp, Robert designed that. He's designed tons of other things for people, but this is like where he's at his best here. Really nice reverb with a modulated setting that I'm gonna use. There's spring and then there's shimmer, a lot of controls. And then this delay. Now this delay is freakishly good in my opinion for the topology. It uses a 2399 chip that I've never been able to get to sound like he's getting out of this. It's actually wizardry. I've asked him how he does it. He kind of explains it. I don't understand. It is a fantastic sounding delay. Um, I'm gonna use the deep mod setting. Now, I believe the way he's using this is he started with, hey, the 2399 has a data sheet. Most people build pedals off the data sheet. He hated that. He got into it, started playing around, fighting with it, and he came up with some really creative solutions to use this chipset. And he threw in a boss style LFO circuit along with that for the modulation. So it's a very, very beautiful delay pedal and reverb in a very affordable package. I'll play these together. I'll start off with the delay and the drive on, and then I'll smash the reverb on for another part. Next up is the Oxblood. Take a guess at what this is. Anyone? No one? That's fine. A Klon has Oxblood colored knobs. So this is his take on a Klon. Now here's what's really interesting. Myself and millions of others, we just have replicated a Klon at some point. He decided to make the Klon get the sound of it without using any of the original circuit. So he just took a wild stab at how would I do that sound? 
and it came out in his words more of just a really good overdrive distortion with the clean blend. It's really, really good. I think that it is a unique flavor of distortion. I think when you start cranking this up, some really cool stuff happens. Yeah, I think it came out around 2016. In my opinion, this may be one of the more underrated devices he makes. You should try this out because it doesn't really sound like any other overdrive. And that's really good if you're looking for something different. Let's jam. Honestly, it was just me playing guitar like a virtuoso. Would you agree? You guys? Sound like clown jazz. It was it like like if a clown played a blues solo. Yeah. It felt, it's how I feel right now, so that's what I play. That is my art. I do also want to give a big shout out to uh, Creighton, who also designed this with Robert. He's a brilliant design engineer at Keeley, and uh, Robert has an amazing team. I'm going to try to talk about more of these people as we go through it. Let's jump to the next pedal. Next up is the Dyna Trim. So this pedal does tremolo, obviously, because it's called Dyna Trim. But it is a really cool thing that happened within Keeley Electronics where Robert has a design engineer with DSP. His name is Aaron Tackett. And Aaron is really good at what he does. And when they first started, the whole idea was, can we start writing code to sound like or pull off the feeling and sounds of old analog gear. And one of the first things they went after is harmonic trim. This has three settings. It has basically like the dynamic rate, dynamic depth, and then the harmonic trim. So I'm gonna play in that. And then you have a reverb here, a really interesting, I would say it's a plate-ish reverb. That's what it feels like to me. I'm just gonna play something, see what happens. Trim just gets you going when you're not ready to go. So I'm gonna turn this on to see see where the road goes. I don't know. I'll see you on the other side though. <laughs> That was like a swamp snake slithering through the swamp. Um, I liked it. And I wasn't at all playing any type of, you know, CCR licks like from Suzy Q. I wasn't doing that at all. Next up, I'm going to pair a fuzz with an echo. The Fuzz Bender, this came out in 2019, I believe. It was in our episode, My Favorite Pedals of the Year. And this was my favorite fuzz. It is his take on the three transistor tone bender style fuzz. And in typical Robert fashion, he did something a little crazy. He put an active boss style EQ in it because you can do whatever you want. 
you can create your own road, so to speak. You can make your own destiny. And basically Robert is a master of that. This thing with the bias control is wild. You can go from full to just spitting dying hyena sounds. And I'm gonna live somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna put the mag echo on, which is my favorite Keeley delay overall. And it is just the delay in here. So like this came and then this happened. This was originally released as is uh, from the 2399 chipset. And when Robert was getting his feet back on the ground and kind of his big relaunch several years ago, the first units of this, I believe it was all given away for like Hurricane Katrina. And then he revisited it and ended up putting it back out. It made its way into this. So it's kind of all over the place. So I'm gonna play these together. I'll do a big long ambient delay with modulation. The mod on this is so good. I don't know what's gonna happen, neither do you. And that's why we're here. Rowdy. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to use the Mag Echo again, but I'm going to do one of my favorite delay sounds ever, which is a single, really hard, high mix repeat tape sound. So you're going to hear the note and the note again, and it just disappears. And it, in certain ways, almost can feel like reverse or something. It feels otherworldly if you play into it the right way. Instead of the fuzz, I'm going to use the Super Fat Mod Germanium, or the Germanium Super Fat Mod. So you saw this earlier. Well, it's the same pedal, meaning it's his modded blues driver, but in the center of the circuit, he inserted a Dallas Rangemaster style thing. So you have the touch dynamic, sensitivity, blah, 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 of the blues driver, which is amazing, the FET style thing. And then you have Germanium in the middle with the frequency. It's just wild, really good stuff. I like how this looks too. It looks like when I touch this, like I'm like I'm solving something, like I'm fixing something. I don't know. What is what am I saying here? Does it have a, it has like a look, like a like there's something about this, right? It's like a it's like a tool it's of like rock. It's like a tool of it's a button of rock. It's like a tool of rock button. This is like the circle says, do this. Do this. Do this. That was awesome. It wasn't at all like a Toadies thing. I wasn't trying to do that really. Does your shirt I, say Robert Keeley yelled at me? This? Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you explain? It's just a, it, it's, you know, stuff happens and people do things. It's fine. Why? You got, I don't know. Are you guys okay? Yeah. I talked to him yesterday. I mean, we talk know. all the time. I mean, it was just, it's a, it ha you know. I'm a different person, and every and he's he's allowed to change too. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. I, don't hold it over his head. I you was just you ever yell at anybody? Have you ever yelled at anybody? Well, yeah. Well, that's all it is. It's no big deal. I don't know why this is getting turned around on me. Well, you need to stop worrying about him. Okay. This next and last jam will have two pedals. First up is the Keeley modded Tube Screamer. I guess the Mod Plus 
That's the blue sticker here. This is where most of us first saw Robert Keeley. He doesn't do mods anymore. And the second pedal I'm gonna play came out at a time when he only did the mods and he only made his famous compressor. Now this is the Java Boost. This is the first ever Keeley pedal I actually saw. I used the mods. I had seen this at like a 2002 summer NAM show in the George L booth. I didn't put two and two together that it was the same modification guy, whatever. It's a treble booster. So it is the range master style thing with a bunch of mods. So, you know, he's making the compressor. He's making some mods. He gets into this article by a DIY legend named RG Keen and he just does this uh, treble booster. So you have different ranges. So in the middle is kind of traditional and then you have two different kind of bass frequencies, so more or less bassy. Volume and tone, it's a classic. This is the only vintage one I'm showing here today, but that's okay. And uh, I'll have this on, and then I'll slam this into this because I'm playing a clean Fender-y style amp, and a treble booster needs a little grit on the other end of it. I don't want to play this into a clean amp because I would bleed, and you would bleed, and your computer would shut down, and you'd have that fatal syntax error message pop up on your phone. Honorable mentions here. I can't play everything I like, so I'm gonna show you some things that I really do like that deserve to be looked at. 30 MS Double Tracker. This is a killer idea. It's basically emulating the way people would double track things with tape. So this first started probably with the Beatles and you track a vocal and you track the same vocal and you have this double layered version of a singular thing. So this does it on guitar, it's really nice. You could call it a reverb delay, but it's specifically tuned for a doubling effect. And I find that though you can do that on a delay, this is much easier, this is quicker, and dare I say, more inspirational. Next up is the Synth One. This is a really fun pedal, you've probably seen it on the show. It looks great, it sounds great, it's weird. If you like weird, this is what you wanna go for. Basically, it's a synthesizer engine with a boss slow gear involved in how it opens and closes. What can go wrong? The DS9, this may be, you know, I said this was underrated. Maybe this is the most underrated. So the Ibanez Sonic Distortion SD9 and the DS1 are similar. This is both of those and more. If you like 80s, 70s distortion, just buy this. Just go buy it right now. Well, wait, don't you? You bought it, good. Next, this. Got to collaborate with, Wa with Wobbert. Got to collaborate with Robert. This is a real honor. He's just such a big uh, hero of mine. I remember meeting him at NAM. We went and talked in the food court, yelled at each other over the symbols, got to know each other, and we ended up collaborating. And so this is a morning glory and his compressor in one. It's called the Steak and Eggs. It's about 500 of these made, I think. So they've been off the market for a while. You can find them used. It's really cool, special to me, maybe special to you. I know it has a lot of fans out there. I still see it on boards. That's my honorable mentions. Now, let's go to record time. Today's record time is brought to you by Werewolves of Portland by Paul Gilbert. This is his new record, uh, 2021. These are both autographed copies. So what we're gonna do here is gonna give these away. But first, it's a really good record and it has argument about pie on it. This song debuted on our channel with the Paul Gilbert release. Uh, if you know the song, it's been stuck in your head for about two years. Now you can listen to it. Go check this out. Paul's at his best. Heavy, heavy, amazing Van Halen vibes and very typical 
uh, Paul Gilbert humor and fun. Just really great musicianship. The band is amazing. I think Paul plays tons of stuff on this. So, yeah, argument about Pi, the title track, Werewolves of Portland. I Want to Cry Even Though I Ain't Sad. Great track as well. We're going to give one away. There's a link in the description below, so go down there and check that out. We'll give that away here. And then we're going to give the other one away over on the Patreon. So if you're a member of the Patreon, you have a chance as well. That's a thing. Thanks so much for watching this episode. In the comments below, let us know your favorite Robert Keeley pedal. Let us know all about it. If you've owned one that you loved and got rid of and regret it, which you probably do, drop that in there as well. Let's just talk about Robert Keeley. Let's spread the love. He's made some amazing devices. This is his 20th anniversary, and that's a big deal. So, yeah, go follow him on Instagram as well. Bother him. Tell him he's awesome. If you like this, hit like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of future episodes. In the description below, there is a link to BandLab. You can jam along with today's jams or any jams we've ever done, really, for the most part. You can sing, you can play harmonica, you can play jaw harp. We don't really care. You can do whatever you want. You can go to the JHS store. There's a link there as well. And you can be a member of the Patreon and help us support the preservation of pedal history. That's it for today. Oh, wait. What? I really need to know why Robert yelled at you. It's not about the yelling. It. It's you fine. Had a shirt and, well, like, I knew I was. Listen, I knew. Yelled at me. I knew I was filming this. And I wanted to go back to that moment to remember that life is precious. Why did he yell at you? It doesn't matter why he yelled at me. It's just that we're not there anymore. You why did he yell at you? Why are you yelling? Nick yelled at me. Make me a shirt. Hey, make. I need that shirt now. Who are you talking to? At that person over there. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Okay.